Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Dennis Mariano. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, this is our Transformational Healing Seminar and it's a very exciting time for us in our practice because we get the opportunity to connect with each other and also to go deeper into the awareness and the principles of how the body works. Um, as you know, muscle testing is one of the um, main things that we do in our practice and it's really important for people to understand the mechanism behind it and without understanding the mechanism there is that chasm so there's a mystery around it so our job tonight is to share with you um, the principles and how muscle testing works to share the science behind it number number two and also to share of how we use it in our practice okay so with that we'll start right away Uh, our practice mission statement, we're going to start with that, is to provide you with the best technology in holistic health and life care. And also our catalyzing statement is to inspire people to live thriving lives so they can be a beacon of hope for others. What does that say, what does that mean to you um, with, with regard to the catalyzing statement? How does that speak to you? Well, tell me more about that. It's propelled to go from this point to the next point to the next point. Okay. And right. have action. Right. What else, Chris? What do you think that means, the catalyzing statement that we have in terms of what it says? When you leave here, after you get adjusted, mm -hmm. you should feel ready to go out and do something. Right. feel like you're ready to work or whatever, be a better person. Right. And then if you are a better person and you're functioning better, then therefore you get the opportunity to light somebody else's candle. And that's really the goal that we have. Let me just double check something here. Okay. Um, sorry if you guys hear the noise in the background. They're doing construction next door uh, at the new uh, office there. So uh, everybody online, so if you have any questions, type them in and comment so that we can have a dialogue about this um, seminar. So muscle response testing, Dr. George Goodhart was a chiropractor way back in the 60s. He actually discovered the relationship between the body's communication vibrational system and the nervous system. So in the olden days, the, the thinking was, and it's still true, that when you have the nervous system that controls everything in your body and you have interference to that nervous system because of subluxation, then what happens then is that the body malfunctions. And so people would get their spines adjusted and the, the assumption was that, the theory was that if you adjust the spine and you take pressure off the nervous system, then what ends up happening is that the body will restore function and therefore health. Many times it would happen, but there were times it wouldn't happen. And so what I found in the minute here, we'll discuss, I'll show you the nervous system, it was actually a two-way uh, relationship between afferent and efferent. And so sometimes the organ would actually be malfunctioning and therefore the adjustments wouldn't hold. And that's why the muscle test is really critical to do. Also, Dr. Goodhart was well-renowned outside of um, chiropractic because he was very influential and in, outside the field. So the way, again, what he discovered, because your muscle, uh, your nervous system is basically your access highway to um, where everything lives in your body, so the communication between the organs is to, your, to the spine. If the spine misaligns, then the organs, by default, mal malfunction. But here's what he found. You can have a subluxation to create organ dysfunction, but you could also, let's say, eat bad food or have a negative emotion, and then it'll affect the stomach right? Irritate the stomach, irritate the nerve from the stomach, and subluxate you. Does that make sense? So this is called the somato or body visceral reflex, and this is the visceral somatic reflex. They go both ways. Does that make sense? So it's just like a mathematical equation, right? So if you have, you have to proof it, both sides have to agree, or it doesn't count. That was a discovery, and it got deeper and deeper and deeper into this, and into how the body really works. So some resources, people go, oh, muscle testing, what the heck is that? It seems like a party trick and so on. Well, there's a lot of resources. Dr. David Hawkins had written many, many books. Among them, the first one was Power Versus Force. 
he was a medical doctor and a PhD, and he studied and cataloged deeply, profoundly, what muscle testing and the scientific validity of it. Dr. Klinghart is an MD, PhD, is from Germany. He's been in practice for almost 50 years, and he does nothing except use muscle testing to, um, to in his practice. Dr. Dan Monti is actually our right-hand person that teaches NET or neuroemotional technique, a technique that we use to clean out the body-mind um, distortions as a consequence of emotional stress. He's actually the, the director of Mar the Marcus Institute of Integrative Health. So he's, he's very influential and, and he actually is, does muscle testing. He's actually a psychiatrist uh, in Jefferson Hospital. This was us a long time ago. In, what was that, 2017? So I was a little taller than him, and now I'm just kidding, so just showing you that that's not true. Another nice book, and I need to find this because I need to get the, the, some of the research out of it um, in more detail, Energy Medicine, The Scientific Basis by Jim Oshman. It's another um, I, uh, concept of muscle testing and how it works. Lynn McTigard, The Field, The Quest for the Secret Force of the Universe. It's another important um, book can read about in terms of energetic fields, vibrational fields. The Hands of Light, anybody know who Barbara Ann Brennan is? Right, remember how she started out? She used to be a NASA scientist. She used to study atmospheres. And so one time she began to develop her senses, her extrasensory senses. She thought she had something wrong with her eyes when what was really happening is she was starting to see auras around people. And so she started eventually to dive into that from being a scientist to go into that. So now she actually has a school Barbara Brennan School of Healing, and then you can actually, everybody has this capacity to do this, but when you're grown up, you know, mom and dad say, no, don't do that, stop doing that, then you just keep, we all get pushed down, and the beingness of who we are, the pureness of who we are, never gets expressed fully, because from generation to generation to generation, we're all being suppressed, you understand? So what she does, it allows what was already inside of us, the capacity we have to actually heal properly, um, and also to be able to see things. Uh, Dr. Lanza, MD, this is a really powerful book as well, but it's, it'll hurt your brain, so just to warn you. Like you read one paragraph, like, oh, what did I mean by that? How can that be? But how life and consciousness are the key to understanding the true nature of the universe. Rupert Sheldrake, Morphic Resonance, The Nature of Formative Cause, is another book you can look into. And so the question is, why do we test? Because our part of a holistic approach, there's six different interferences in the body, and we can scan all those interferences and becoming more and more specific so that body, when you finally heal, not only are you symptom free or feeling better, but your trajectory as you get older in traditional, in traditional life is what? Decline. It's a decline and it's expected and it's accepted, isn't that true? Oh, you're gonna get older, you're gonna have more arthritis, you're gonna get older, you're gonna get worse, you're gonna get more disease, you're gonna take more pills. That's if you don't understand the mechanism. So our goal is to get you what? Not only feeling better, but what? Your trajectory as you get older should be what? You should be improving, right? You should be improving. So, and the mechanism is that your body, if it's communicating 100%, the brain and the body communicating, you should have 100% what? Function. Yes, you should have 100% fun function. So the body should be functioning properly. However, when you have these subluxations in the spine, which is caused by six interferences, and if you're gonna narrow it down, it's physical stress, what else? Emotional. What kind of emotional stress and chemical stress. Can you get away from any of those in this world now? 29 years ago, I would adjust somebody with cancer and the cancer would go away. Why isn't it happening anymore? There's too many stresses in the environment. Everything's poisoned, right? If you and I, Sylvia, since you and I are were classmates and went to two different schools together. Yes. <laughs> when I, when we were, let's say, you know, eight years old, and I would have said to you, "Hey, Sylvia, someday you're gonna have to buy bottled water." Well, what would you have said? Water's free. Why would you put it in you, water? Well, what, what, you can't. You can't drink anything anymore. I mean, there were studies way way back when that what they found is that um, the hormones that women take, birth control, goes into the water. They don't filter for that. So guess where it goes? goes into the water supply and there are fish on the bottom of the dam that are changing sexes as a consequence of the hormonal toxicity going on. And so even if you don't take antidepressants, hormones or anything, if you don't take those things, you're still drinking them if you drink from the tap. 
So you have to, unfortunately, have to filter everything. So that's the reason why we get subluxated from physical, emotional, and chemical stresses in our lives. So how do we know that's true? Well, way back in 1921, Dr. Henry Winsor was a pathologist that worked at uh, University of Pennsylvania, and they said, hey, Dr. Winsor, what effect does subluxation have on people? And here's what he found. He would take whatever, remember the visceral somatic, somatic visceral reflex? So he would take whatever that person died of, that organ system that was failed, that caused their death, he would take the nerve from that organ, trace it back to the spine, and almost 100% of the cases he found that whatever that person died of, their spine had either arthritis or a small scoliosis. So what's the equation? You damage your spine, you stress the spine, you damage your nervous system, you damage your health. Nothing's changed. Has the biology changed? Has your spine changed? No, it's all the same thing. Nothing's changed. So what has changed is our understanding of what the stress is caused in our body. So that if you're not creating a health plan that allows you to have a trajectory, guess what you're expecting? What do they say? If you're not um, failing to plan is what? Planning to fail. You gotta have a plan, you gotta have a plan. And how many people do you really know have a health plan? No, it's all reactionary, right? They only do something when they're about to die or get sick, they get serious all of a sudden, right? Oh, let's get serious about this now. It's like, that'd be like saying, all right, I'm 65 now, so I should probably think about retirement. No, you gotta get serious when you're in your 20s or your 30s, right? So then it's not so hard because there are things that have a timeline on them. Because when you were born, you should ideally have what? Open book test. <laughs> yeah, and then you get subluxated from life. What happens to the nerve system? It gets distorted, it doesn't function well. Therefore, what happens to your body? And then therefore, and then the last thing to happen is all those kinds of things that you go to doctors for, or you to consult with somebody. But look how far down the gradation it is, right? Look how far down it is. And, and then the, the facade is that if you get rid of these symptoms, you're healthy now. Is that true? How many rungs are you down the ladder? And that's why people go from symptom to non-symptom, symptom to non-symptom. And thinking that clearing the symptom up is really health, and it's not. You're so far away from what reality is. So our clinical reasoning for why we use muscle testing is to establish the body's priority, uh, avoid trial and error, prevent confusion. For example, somebody will come in, like somebody said the other day, it's like, oh yeah, um, we all have the same symptom, like we all have the summer cold. Like, how do you know that? Well, because somebody had it and they passed it on to somebody else. That's not the way it works. And remind me how to, um, how do we differentiate that? Okay, remind me when, when, when it's time for us to do that. Also, how to identify what your body needs. Isn't that true that you both, you all have different needs? because you're all individuals with different histories. So why would you do the same adjustment? Why would you do the same thing to somebody else that you would do for somebody else? It doesn't help that way. So how does it work? Dr. Masaru Emoto, anybody know who that is? Yeah, I don't either. No, no, he's a, he's a scientist from Japan and he studied the molecular structure of water and how it gets affected by words and sounds and intentions and thoughts. Would you agree that everything in the world is vibrational? What types of vibrations are you? have the vibrational frequency of sound, which we're hearing now, vibrational frequency of light, which you can interpret with your senses, right? So everything's vibrational frequency. So if your body is how many percent water, right? How many percent water is your body? 90 when you're a baby, and then you start losing the baby fat and all that, so it goes to 80% water. Right, but still, it's a lot of water, correct? So water has molecular structure. So what he found is he would put words in the water, and like for example, in Japanese, thank you, that's what the crystals would look like when you look under a microscope. This is said, what's that say? Beautiful. Yeah, that's what the structure, the molecular structure of your water is. You have to be careful what you think of, right? Let's do it or just do it. When you take away the connection, when you take away the collaboration, the frequency of the water and vibration frequency changes dramatically. That's what how your, your cells look like, right? When somebody says you're beautiful. I mean, you can even feel it, right? Go ahead, tell each other that. Go ahead. 
You're beautiful, Chris. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate it. Is it you, can't you feel that? Like something really shifts really? in your vibrational field when somebody says that to you. And vice versa, when somebody gives you a ne negative experience or, right? That's the word dirty. Hmm. Peace, hope, war, despair. You gotta be careful what you think of. You gotta be careful what comes out of your mouth. What does that look like, Chris? <laughs> Something in the toilet, right? Does that make sense? Amazing grace. Love and gratitude. How about experiencing water experience when it comes to music? You see this? Beethoven, Mozart, Vivaldi, heavy metal, <laughs> pop music. I wonder what you, can you, hey Chris, remember this, try to see if I can research uh, the rap, what that would be like, oh, see where that vibrational yeah, frequency is. Interesting, yes. Right? So all the different molecular structures you can see from different types of frequency. Everything's vibrational frequency. Music has frequency. It affects the water in your body because you're 80% water. So they took this water from a dirty the bottom of a dam. It was really yucky and they prayed for it. And they took another picture afterwards. Were there people to verify this? Oh yeah, this is like, look it up. I mean, this is like, yeah. this is like a, an hour long video of how it all started. You know, it's been re repeated, you know. Yeah, Dr. Masaru Moto is a PhD. He's not like some, like what would reason would we have? <laughs> Think about it, what reason would we have? He's not selling anything. He didn't sell anything from this. It's just he published the studies, the outcomes, right? So muscle testing, the first thing you need to do is, oh, where's Rosie the doll? Ah, we gotta get that. Melinda, are you still here? No, she leave. Okay, all right. I need to get Rosie. Hey, Sylvia, you know where the cabinets are in there? The road, get Rosie the doll in the, 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 the middle. Yeah, the middle. Um, uh, 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 big doll. The division. The, 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 the divider. Person. Yeah, the divider. It's in one of those. So what you want to do is, um, so Chris, come on up here and let me show you. Let me make you an example so that we can. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Okay. So. What you do, are you guys are gonna pair up. I actually want you to do that right now, immediately. So, introduce yourself to each other. So come stand up right away, and then one person hold the arm up like this, make a fist, right? Okay. And then you put your hand right here, and we're gonna fine tune this in a minute. Face me a little bit more, Chris. And then you put your other hand on the shoulder for stability there. And then, and so your elbow's bent here, and then you just tell the person to use about two to five pounds of resistance, and then you will push on it, tell the person say resist, give them a couple seconds, they'll resist, and then you push down for two seconds, hold strong, hold, resist. again resist, there you go, and resist, and do that like five times, just back and forth. Right, hold again, resist, and resist, and resist, good. What does that mean? If okay, it's, she's resist. not resisting enough. So, okay, hold. There you go. You got it. And don't push hard. Just make sure uh, that, yeah. <laughs> don't make it go down. Just like push so you can get uh, like feedback, yeah. right? Okay. That's yeah. it. Do that a couple times. Good. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then switch. Okay, okay. you do the same thing. So, first. Hold this down. Hold down. Tell me to resist first. Resist. Okay. Resist. Good. And let it, let it go. After two seconds, let it go. Don't keep pushing. Okay. Right. When you resist, yeah. I want to push harder. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Resist. Good. And then let it go. Because you'll fatigue the person otherwise. Yeah. You're trying to get feedback, uh -huh. you know, from from the body. So, okay. And then the hand, you can either go like this, or you can go here, or you can go here. All you're doing is getting feedback, just like when you're pushing your foot on the accelerator. You don't go, ah, you don't do that, right? Or not enough, you just be in the middle. Does that make sense? Okay. So, all right, so now watch this. So, say, what color are you wearing? What shirt? I'm wearing a blue shirt. Okay, say that, I'm wearing a blue shirt. I'm wearing a blue shirt. And then I'm gonna push down, hold, and resist, hold. 
Good, and resist harder. There you go. I'm wearing a blue shirt. So I'm then. wearing a blue shirt. Good, right? So the same thing. So watch what happens. So say a different color. So I'm wearing. I'm wearing a red shirt. Hold. Hold really strong. <laughs> so again, I'm wearing a red I'm shirt. Wearing a red shirt. Hold really strong. Okay. <laughs> Try. Go back and forth. Right. So watch this. Um, so hold there. Right. So I'm wearing a blue jacket. Good. Hold strong. I'm wearing a blue shirt. Okay. And then let it go. And then I'm wearing a pink jacket. Try again. I'm wearing a blue a blue jacket. I'm wearing a pink jacket. You remember? So that was the mechanism behind that, right? I'm wearing a pink shirt. Oh, uh, that's funny. That's amazing. Right? Because the body is vibrational frequencies, correct? I'm wearing a plum shirt. Okay, hold. Well, how about we do the resistance first? Plum shirt. Good. I'm wearing a plum shirt with flowers. I'm wearing a plum shirt with flowers. And then. Hold really strong, Charles. Try again. Shirt. Can't do it, right? Because the body's listening. And that's the mechanism. Because it's a nonverbal part of who you are. When you're telling the truth or not telling the truth, the body knows it. The frequency changes. It gets distorted. That's why you should always tell the truth. Now, what about people who are just pathological? What's that? People who are pathological and they really can, you know, tell a lie and. You could try Sell it. it. You could try it. I'm not pathological. Right. I'm just <laughs> wondering, do, do you yeah, yeah. Not, I yeah. guess. I guess. What's that? They, if they're pathological, whether they believe their lies or not. It depends on what the body, it, that's the thing is, you gotta, uh, just like if you're doing um, a lie detector test, heart rate variability changes, the, the you know, pseudoforous glands <laughs> change, right? Um, brain EEG change. Tells. Right, because it, it responds reflex, reflexively to what is. And that's why this is such a wonderful thing, you know, for us to be able to do in our practice. Because now, and you already know, so you've been here long enough oh, to yes. know, and you took Chris. How long have you been in our practice? Um, a while, about 18 years. 18 years, maybe. Chris. You know, he and I actually were in karate together. We took our, you know, black belt test together. So uh, it's still black, right? That's that got now to <laughs> hold up our pants, right? That's kind of what we use yeah, it for. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and so here's another thing that you could do. Watch this, right? So think of one something wonderful that you want to happen in your life, or something that's really like great and like has you feeling joy. And think about that. Let me know when it's clear. Okay. Good. Hold strong. Yeah. And I'm pushing really hard too. Mm -hmm. Think about something potentially upsetting. And let me know when that's clear. You got it? Mm -hmm. Hold. Hold strong. Blows you out. And so if your body, then think about this too. The water is just, it contains hormones and biochemistry and blood cells. I mean, your brain is CSF. It's all water. So what do you think affects your health when you're not be being careful? Do that with each other. Yeah, and just like think of something wonderful and then think and then go back and forth. You guys, I'll do the same thing. Ready? Okay. Think of something wonderful. Okay, hold on, hold on, wait. Give somebody a chance first, right? Okay. Hey, I'll tell you when. One more time. Something you're excited about. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Solid that is? Yeah, yeah, try again. Go ahead, push hard. Wow. You can't like do anything. So now. I'll think of something upsetting. Let me see, because I don't usually do that, but let me see. Something upsetting. Um, okay. <laughs> you can't do it. You just can't do it. Did you go back and forth yet? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, something, yeah, just give her a chance. Something wonderful. Can you keep your eyes open or shut? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter as long as it makes you clear. Yeah. Okay. Give her a chance. Give her a chance. Don't push on it until it's time. Hold this arm now. So think about someone you're fond of. Besides me. Oh, okay. <laughs> You got it? Mm -hmm. Hold. Okay. <clears throat> really strong, right? Think about somebody you could be having a challenge with, like a you know, irate customer or something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
Imagine. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hold strong. Hold strong. Hold strong. Nothing. Does that make sense there? Yeah. So here's part of the answer to the question: What if somebody's like pathological? Is there, where there are reflexes in the body that you can't help like if somebody like goes like this you're gonna blink right mm -hmm. I mean it's a natural reflex like a bi bi bicephalo tendon reflex you have the patellar reflex there's some reflexes built into the body so you can also do this hold this arm now relax face that way now good look straight ahead good now you can contract the muscle or pinch a muscle like the deltoid hold and it just goes weak hold it has nothing to do with your thoughts it's just mechanical if you spread it apart try it with each other right Try it with each other. Just contract, sure. contract the muscle, right? So actually, do this, do this, this way. Watch, watch. So that's not so. Here, just con contract the other side, and then hold. So give me that and contract. Good. Right there. So the same thing. So muscle test this, and then just and now, squeeze, just squeeze the deltoid down. Yeah. Yeah. Squeeze it pretty hard. There you go. Yeah, but don't okay. keep, and just go like this and then let it go. You said just kind of like yeah. Yeah, in there. one time. Yeah, that's it. And then do it again. So you sit in. Yes. And then spread it apart like this. Squish it together. No, like this. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're doing. See the difference there? Oh, well. Kind of What's weird. that? So how do you how do you control? I wasn't sure about how to do just that. pinch it. Just pinch the yeah, muscle. Just okay. squeeze it. But did you hold it after? No, you no. Squeeze it? it and let it go. Yeah, squeeze it and let it go to okay. to activate it. Okay. So here's another way to do things. So okay, what's the mechanism? Come here, everybody. Come here. All right, Charles. Come here. Come to the camera. <laughs> hold that button with your thumb. Okay, like, hold that. So she's holding. Hold that. Hold that button. Yeah. Hold the whole thing. So that. Yeah. Good. And the other side. Ring around the rosy, pocket full of right, so hold that, action. let it go. Hold that still. Hold on to this and fall. Mm -hmm. Hold her hand. Mm -hmm. Hold Chris's hand. You ready? Mm -hmm. Ring around the rosy, let go. So pocket full. Touch again. Ring around the rosy, let go. No. Okay, you hold still. Okay. You hold together. Ring around the rosy. So there's a little. Keep, you're connecting. Body's electrical. That's why you could do EEGs, EKGs, EMGs. Hold strong. Good stuff. Hold still. Okay. Put the arm down. Ring around the rosy. I could Ring even wrap on it now. <laughs> you understand? So even Kmart knows about it. This okay. is not a special doll. This is a Kmart doll. Wow. It's actually one of the originals we had so to buy online. There's energy. Because there's a they charge. don't sell them anymore. You do you understand? So do you understand why it's so critical to see the signs? You need to own this stuff. If you don't own this stuff, you're like, whoa, what are you doing? You know, it's like, so, so another way you could test, you could put that down, Chris, okay. there, is do this. Um, so O-ring test, go here, right? Mm -hmm. Here or here, you could do either one, and then put your two fingers and your thumb and try to separate it. And you can pick yes or no. For example, strength could, strong could be yes, mm -hmm. right? and then we could be no and practice it. Strong yes, no, just say yes, no, yes, no, yes, wow. no, yes, no. Just practice and practice and practice. Now you can go, Cheryl is wearing a flowered uh, shirt. She's wearing a pink shirt. She's wearing, can you see that? So you can test and we'll talk about what things you can test. So that's another way to do it. The O-ring test, um, come over here, Cheryl. So go like this with your finger. Right, turn around here, come close over there. Good, make it really strong so the camera can see it. I'm gonna pull it apart. Say I'm wearing glasses, say that. I'm wearing glasses. Hold, <clears throat> it's really strong. Say I'm wearing contacts right now. I'm wearing contacts right now. Hold strong. Okay, so see it's really strong, so what you need to do is switch over, relax, do the pinky instead. Right, so make it circle if you can. Good, I'm wearing glasses. I'm wearing glasses. Hold. I'm wearing contacts. I'm wearing contacts. Try again. I'm wearing glasses. I'm wearing glasses. I'm wearing contacts. I'm wearing contacts. Right? So you, it's, you're just feed, getting feedback from the body. Does that make sense? Also, now you could do this too. Pretend that's an arm. Right, Chris? So go here. 
pretend that's an arm and you can just go down. This is a yes, this is a no, this is a yes, this is a no, this is a yes. You have many ways to communicate with the body. How about sticky fingers too, do this. Like this is a uh, yes, this is a no. This is a yes, this is a no. Pick one. Yes, no, the same thing, thing. I'm wearing a blue shirt, right? I'm wearing a pink shirt. Pick one and see what the body responds to. All right, so there are many ways that you could do this. Occipital drop from Dr. Corin, you can actually go like this. You can go yes, no, yes, no. You pick one, then you'll begin to feel, you know, uh, feedback from the body. Another thing you could do is actually what's called a sway test. You can sway back and forth. Some people like that. You can say you no know or yes. Some people do that too. Again, you're just getting feedback from the body. Now, here's the thing. If you're not used to this, don't you have to practice it? Remember when you first learned how to drive? I know it was a long time ago. Like you accelerate and then you give yourself whiplash, right? And then you push the brake on the other way and bang into a, you know, like sidewalks and so on because you're not used to that muscle memory yet. So if you're gonna practice this, you have to practice it very consistently. Do you, for yourself, you could do what we just did. If you were trying to test someone else, like a parent who maybe wants to know something about a child, do you have to explain to the person what you're doing or just say, hold your arm strong? No, you have to explain because okay. they don't understand what's going on. Yeah. So you have to definitely explain. Yeah. And you have to be really um, experienced at this by the time you get to that level of <laughs> checking somebody else because it gets, surrogate testing what we just did right so let me have hey Chris let me have that again so imagine that you know let's say there's a baby here you can't muscle test the baby because they're not gonna know what to do um, so come on Chris so what you'll do he'll hold the baby right and I'll muscle test hold the hormone good and I'll check that baby for subluxations and it'll go weak wherever that baby needs to be adjusted correct because then again you're completing that circuit still so and it's so funny because I had a kid that was adjusting she had ear infections when she was little I think she was six months old when she started she's now I think two and a half three and one time she comes in she goes she just started holding her arm up because she saw me adjust mom through her and she would just like start holding her arm up I think I have a video of that so you know she just start muscle testing so they know they know what's going on you know it's pretty interesting and most of the time um, by the way, Chris, it's just when we were younger. Look how much hair I used to have on there. Huh? <laughs> huh? We all do. Yeah, who was that late? I remember that. Tracy? Girl, Tracy yeah, and, yeah. and Morgan. Morgan, yeah. So that's the, one of the original roses. Morgan Can you see this? She's ready to nod off. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, these girls used to work for me a long time ago. But yeah, that's the way you can, you can actually, you can actually, yeah, surrogate test, right? So but, how, how do you test, oh, that's why if, I call you and say I'm having whatever, whatever, and yeah. Heather can help you. She's the yeah. surrogate. Yeah, you could just sur yeah, you could just surrogate with somebody else. So if you were a patient here, we always say, look, when you get in trouble, you have like one sniffle or you some pain somewhere, and you're not here because you're not, you don't have a visit here. I'll just scan. Here's what you need: what you're eating, what you're drinking. You know, we can scan it remotely. It's like Wi-Fi. That's all it is. Or if you go to like, if you have an IT person, right? They just did it today. They remote into your computer and they take over it. And they start, you know, right? Yeah. They're not here. Right. So how can you do, so if the computer can do that, what can your body do? The computer can't have a baby. You can have a baby. You know what I'm saying? So can you have a baby? No, okay. So it's like, <laughs> just checking. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, and items to test, right? So you could test nutritional supplements. Can you give me one here, Chris? Um, yeah, that is, um, here's Cheryl, come here, because we can do a, 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 a neutral subject. Hold this now. Hold this arm, make a fist, right? Hold strong, push against me. Good. No, up, you're pushing up. Good. There you go. Hold that. Put that on your chest and hold. See how it goes weak? That means you don't need that. Okay, that's a natural muscle relaxer. Give me something else. What is the question that you ask when you're Does the body need this? Okay. Give me another one. Oh, you want to test you? Yeah, okay. why not? Okay, hold. I don't think I had this <coughs> hold. before. Hold strong. Hold really strong. Can't do it. So then you're not guessing on it. You know exactly what you need. Give me another one. Come back, Cheryl. Yeah, pro -ensis. Yeah, pro -ensis. This is usually, this is an amazing nutrient that actually is anti-inflammatory, right? Come close to the camera. Hold this now. And resist. Make sure you smile. No, just kidding. Hold strong. <laughs> hold this again. And hold. 
you don't need it. So even though it's good, then this way you don't end up taking vitamins you don't need. Because anytime you take something you don't need, you have to metabolize it. You're wasting energy. How about yours, Chris? Hold. See, for him, it's really strong. Let me see. Whoa. I'm surprised. I don't need that. All right. See the difference there? So I do need it. Right. No, come here. Come here. Come here. So pull. Oh, right. I Ready? I just take that. <laughs> and then I hold that now. All right. Hold. Doesn't need it, right? Now watch this. Come here. Hold her hand. Okay. Come, come around this way. So I put this. Keep it there. Hold this arm. Make a fist. Hold. Goes weak. Because who am I checking? Mm. Right. Let me have it. Hold it. Okay. Hold. You would need it. Yeah. Hold her hand because you're connected. We're checking you. No. No, that's pretty interesting. Wow. Do you understand? <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. So that's how you can check. You can check nutrients, you can check your toiletries, your soaps, your detergents, lotion, whatever, because you don't know what kind of chemicals are in there. Right? So you need to be able to check those if things. If you're holding that, yeah. and you don't have anyone to test with you... Or put you on your lap and go like this. Oh, okay. Whatever you need to do. Yeah. Or this. Remember? There are all the different things that you could do. Uh, foods and beverages, the same thing. Uh, should I eat that? Should I not eat that? Is there preservatives in there? Whatever. Just muscle test it. And how do you know if the food, you have food intolerances? You can muscle test that too. Anybody have a cell phone here? Yeah. Turn it on there, Sylvia. And then uh, you know, the cell phone, microwave. Um, right? Yeah, turn that on. Um, so drugs, medications. You can test that on your own. Obviously, I can't do that because that's out of my scope of practice. But, um, but I was wondering about that. Drugs and medications could be tested. Absolutely. Oh, See if the body wants it. That. Yeah, come here. Yeah. So this is on, right? Yes. Hold strong. It's about it right there. Mm. Hold. Hold. Stay there. It's a space, right? Can you see this? Yeah. That's it. So what's the question? Meaning? Where is it before the body goes weak where the EMFs are now affecting your brain? You think you should do that ever? You should always speakerphone it, right? Even though it's annoying. So there you go, you can have that back. And then also, for example, if you're gonna do kinesio taping, right? Do you just kinesio tape everybody the same way? Or should you muscle test it? For example, if I kinesio tape an, um, um, a calf, I need to know which direction it should go, you ask the body. So every technique that you have, you get the opportunity to take it to the next level because you can muscle test everything. Maybe they don't need to. Exactly right. You might not even need it. You ask the body, does he need kinesi tape? Yes, okay, where? Which direction? Now you can really tune in and be very specific. So other things, so when you experience, so thank you, Chris. Yeah. You see now. So when you are, we have symptoms or you have immune system challenges, you need to understand what's causing it, right? So then the thing is, what's the priority? So the holistic approach to balancing who you are would be number one, clear out the nervous system first. Why is that important? Why should you clear out the nervous system first? So that you get true Yes, you can get through information. If you get bad Wi-Fi signal, or like we have serious radio in the car, you go under a bridge, like you know, it interrupts it. You know, I actually have a friend who's a serious radio announcer, and you can't hear him when he goes under a bridge. No, never mind. Okay, so <laughs> it's, it's not worth waiting for. So. Anyway, um, and then also adjust. Once you adjust the spine, you can also adjust extremities. You can muscle test all those. Because the extremity issue can actually be an extremity issue as opposed to something else. You can have a knee issue, but it's not a knee issue, then you have to muscle. And another thing is that we do the position of subluxation. You know, Sylvia, when, you, when we adjust you guys, right, Chris? When we adjust you guys, first you're facing what? Face up. Right. Because you're subluxated differently than when you're face up or when you're? Face down. Total different subluxation pattern. The joints are loaded differently. How about when you're sitting down? Can you be subluxated sitting down? That's what all people do, is sit down all day long. Should you not be checked sitting down, subluxation patterns? How about standing up? So when you check the body, when it comes to subluxation patterns, you need to know what position it's in. 
Does that make sense? And that's how you get a little clarity. And so that's why when your body gets healthier and healthier and healthier and healthier, because you're doing it on purpose. You're not just randomly moving things around to make feel better. It's good to feel better, but you know, it's not really the priority. And check for neuroemotional components too. So for example, if there's an emotional component to whatever issue is going on, or here's another mechanism. Let's say you've been under care for like six months, nine months. All of a sudden your body has gained enough momentum because it's releasing all the tension, right? All of a sudden, emotions start to show. What happened to your knee? Remember that? You're saying that. I'm like, well, that's like, that Remember that? So what happened? Tell, tell them the story. But come here, come here up here. Tell the story about what happened oh here. Oh my God, I'm not ready for that. It's okay. Oh you look marvelous. Thank you you look beautiful. Thank you. Um, yes, on a Saturday, uh -huh. I woke this up. Was not, this was just you. Just in the mouth. You didn't do anything, right? I didn't do anything. Went to yeah. bed. Uh -huh. Felt perfectly fine. Woke up on a Saturday morning. Went to get out of bed and I like literally fell to the ground because my left knee was non-functional. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, what happened? Like <laughs> somebody beat think. me in my sleep, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> and I like, my, my knee, it just, it was severe pain. I could not bear weight on my left knee. Yeah. Was it the knee? It was the ankle. It was the knee. It was, it was the, the knee. knee. But why was it the knee? What was going oh, on? Oh, that's what it is. Right. So um, I, I was ready to go to like the emergency room uh -huh. or uh, urgent mm -hmm. care. My yeah. husband, in his infinite wisdom, <laughs> ha ha. <laughs> um, said, why are you going to do that? They're going to just give you pain pills yeah. and whatever and not fix it. You should call yeah. Dennis. And I was like, okay, you're right. And so I called and so he was able to get me in and he started working on it. I told him I need and I came in on crutches. Mm -hmm. I literally couldn't bear weight. I and remember that now, the crutches. I, 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 I you know, my, my yeah. son had an ankle injury, so we yeah. had some crutches in the attic, got the yeah. crutches, and I, cr you know, crutched in, mm -hmm. and you started working, you said, it's not your knee, it's your ankle, and I was like, my ankle, my yeah. ankle, I, yeah. my ankle's fine, I, my knee is non-functional. But, but what happened when you were 19? Um, when I was 19, I hyperextended my knee, and someone so, startled me, and I popped my knee backwards, yeah. and it was swollen for days, and I was on crutches back then, and all yeah. that, but that was an injury ages ago yeah. and just spontaneously that morning i woke up and you know and so right so the body memory was locked in when she was 19 and all of a sudden she's getting adjusted getting adjusted everything's releasing 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 the next layer of the emotions came up now even though you don't know it because when, when you do NET it's nothing to do with the neocortical logical part of who you are that's like therapy that's what you work on things that you're logically aware of this is in the mammalian part of your brain. We have a whole seminar on NET coming up soon. It's in the mammalian part, non-conscious part of your brain, the unconscious that it shows up. And if you don't address that component, the body never heals 100%. And it took us a little while, right? Did. Didn't you do an NET session too? Or I did, I did yeah. one. Yeah, uh -huh. yes. yeah, there was a neuromotional component to it as well. But the body was unwinding since she was 19. So all these adverse issues that you have in your subluxation pattern stays in your body. Energy can't be destroyed or created. It just changes form, yes? So if you're either releasing it or you're uploading it in. And that's why you wonder why with somatic reflex, with Dr. Windsor's study, you wonder why you get older, you get sicker. Because you're never releasing tension in your body. And God knows like you have more tension now than ever before. Right? But thank you for sharing that, Sylvia. So yeah, that neural emotional component is really, really... Um, and then the next thing we do is how's the immune system? Right? And that's why you guys here, even before this whole crazy stuff started a couple of years ago, almost, um, Everybody was safe because we always, we've always checked your immune system. Always, right? The last thing we do, we adjust you, we check emotions, we check homeopathic remedies, you know, homeopathic support is to check the body when it comes to any type of toxicity that your body may have and the organs as a consequence of the emotional stress. Because when emotions, remember, so when the emotions accumulate, you stress the organ, the organ starts to get poisoned. So you have to clear that baby out too. So therefore, then you check the immune system and there's immune protocols that we scan you against, right? And so that's how the body is. So, and then nutri nutritional deficiencies too. What nutrients do you need? Like we just did, right, Chris? Yeah. The thing is, and the thing, you can't just like be buying vitamins. Like you can't do that because you're gonna overwhelm your system. You'll be taking things you don't need, right? And not taking enough of something you may need. Sometimes, you know, remember the five people like told you the same symptoms? This is the time, can you remind me now? Okay. No. <laughs> That's fine. So, you know, a patient came in and said, oh yeah, we all have the summer cold. Dad has it, the brother has it. Whatever. So when you scan, so for example, you'll have, let's say mom, dad, you have a 19-year-old, um, you have like a 15-year-old and like a nine-year-old, right? So you'll scan the 19-year-old uh, finals. Not getting enough sleep, you muscle test them, they just need more sleep. That's why they have a sore throat and now they have symptoms, right? You scan the 16-year-old, 
playing soccer, then hockey, then you get it, they're not getting enough sleep, they're not eating properly, so now you have to fix the nutritional, and then you get them to get more sleep. The other one, nine-year-old, went to a birthday party, guess what they eat there, right? Pizza, cake, and so on. Ruined the gut, totally. Now the immune system, 80% of your immune system is in your gut. They're sick, so what do they need? They may need now probiotics or whatever. Mom, sick, why? Because she's taking care of everybody, mom syndrome, right? So therefore, she may need some nutrients because she's deficient. Dad has the same symptom because he's been traveling or he has stress at work, right? That makes sense? Or he's been traveling to three cities in two days with red eye flights and so on. So he needs more sleep. He doesn't need antibiotics. But the assumption is, oh, we all got the same symptom because it's the cold that's going around. Not the way it works, right? It's easy to think that way, and you can just write it off and put it on your checklist, like, yeah, it's the cold. So, you know what? I got into the point in my life now where nothing stays in my body for more than 10 minutes. If I start like to get a, like the runny nose, I'm muscle testing it, I'm lasering myself with a cold laser because it's antibacterial. The EVRL has violet antibacterial, antiviral. I scan myself for immunoplus, lorisidin, my community, vitamin C, vitamin D. We have a whole immune protocol. And if it gets really deep where something happens to you, you're really, really, really sick, we have like immune boosting protocol that we actually use for people that are working with their oncologists with cancer. It's like a whole, you can go infection, clear the infection, or you can do the immune boosting protocol to boost the immune system instead of suppressing it with, with um, you know, um, medications. So it's so freeing because no matter what happens, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not on the line because I, I know nothing. I'm like Schultz from Logan's Heroes. You know what I mean? It's like, I just know nothing because I don't need to know anything. You need to know you. You need to talk to you. Like, we be out of the equation. So, and that's how you get better because your healing is what you need, not what I need. Does that make sense? And that's why I sleep real well at night. But before I did muscle testing, I'd wake up in the middle of the night. You ever do that? Like, you forget to do something. Ugh, and you just go, oh, did I tell Cheryl the right thing? And did I tell her the right exercises? And, well, I did the research, but I'm not sure if that's still true. That I told her to take three pro-ends and I don't know, it's like you drive yourself crazy. And you imagine thinking about all your patients, you can't sleep well. Now it's like, I sleep like a baby now, you know, because the body, you know, you get exactly what you need. It's like the Rolling Stones, right? You can't always get what you want, but you always get what you need, right? So, um, so sleeping like a baby means like I wake up every two hours and cry. No, no, that's not really what I mean. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so again, the clinical reason why we do this, the body's priority of healing, right? The priority is a physical. Remember, we just described that with regard to the five people and what avoid trial and error. Like, oh, we all took antibiotics. How many times do you hear this? Oh, we took antibiotics and now we're sick again. It's two weeks later. We have the same cold. It came back around. It's like dodging everyone, you know what I mean? So um, avoid trial and prevents confusion. Not one size fits all. We already talked about that. And also, it helps you identify your body's needs. It's very, very individual and very specific. Here's another thing. If you have proper communication with your body constantly, 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 you have good communication with the person that you know or you care about, right? What happens to that relationship? Does it get weaker or stronger? stronger. If you have good communication constantly and you nurture that, it gets stronger. So guess what? The more you ask your body and you do what it tells you, guess what happens to your body? Like. We can work together. Like let's let's like like have a health party constantly because now you're communicating deeply with it. And if you need something, you're never too far away. You never go too far away from health. On the health gradient, right? This is like 100% healthy. This is dead. You're not close to here at all. Most people are like closer to here. They're just like one step in the foot in the grave, right? They're like it's ready to go anytime. Is that where you want to be, or do you want to be way over here? So when you guys are here, like Chris being here for you know a couple of decades now, this is how far you go. You you swing back between malfunction and function, malfunction and function. You never go into pathology ever, because you never give the body a chance to do it. And also viruses and bacteria, they hate living in healthy bodies. They can't do anything there. There's no dead cells to like replicate on. You know, what I mean? it's like everything's just so healthy. Like <laughs> going somebody else that's sick. You know, bacteria and viruses don't make you sick. You are sick and bacteria and viruses are pleomorphic and they multiply in your body because your body is sick. You understand? They don't cause disease. They're a contributing factor to disease. 
So again, we have the home run formula. You have all the six components of sickness. And so has anybody read this article? I'm just kidding. Okay, so, <laughs> so this is from Dr. Ronald Perot way back when. And um, Dr. Perot is the world leading genetic toxicologist in 62. He has his pre-medicine um, MS degree in uh, fungal physiology biological science uh, PhD in University of Rhode Island back in 68 69 he did mycotoxin chemistry in North Carolina State um, he was the chief of cancer prevention at New York Preventive Institute and the professor of medicine and environmental health in New York University and here's what he did again many other things he's done the guy has no life so you know he just keeps like doing things he took he wanted to know what effect does chiropractic care have on your immune system? So he had 22 different parameters he would measure in terms of immune function. Let's talk about two since we don't have all night. Number one is glutathione transferase S, which is an enzyme in your body that if you have high levels of it, you can actually detoxify the body, right? Also, what's called unscheduled DNA synthesis, meaning if your DNA gets damaged and your immune system's strong, and if you repair the damage, then you don't create oncogenes or cancer cells because the body can repair itself and create healthy cells. 20 other ones he measured. And here's what he found. He took 107 people. One group had cancer, clinical case, evidenced by the oncology report and doctor. The other group was the chiropractic group that had gotten their spines adjusted non-symptomatically to keep proper function for five years. Control group, no cancer, no chiropractic care. Why am I going backwards? Don't go backwards. Go ahead, Chris. 107 individuals, they were all genetically normal. That's no obvious genetic reason for increased resistance or susceptibility to disease. So here's what happened. 400%, the chiropractic group had 400% greater immune competence than people with cancer or other serious diseases. 400% immune resistance. The chiropractic patients had also how many percent? 200% greater immune competence than people who did not receive chiropractic care. Well, that was way back when. So, yeah, you know, people, surprisingly too, uh, the, by the range of ages, the immune competency did not show any decline with age and it was uniform throughout the entire group. As soon as they found out, because he worked in the medical university, he did the study, guess what they did? They fired him. It's like, you're out of here. You can't be doing that stuff. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Anyway, so, and that also the, 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 the criticism was, oh, people that get chiropractic care are all like, crunchy, hippie people, so it has nothing to do with chiropractic care, it's their diet. They eat nothing but granola, and so that's why they're healthy. But no, so therefore, there were other studies, DNA repair and serum thiol studies, same thing, that your DNA repair, high levels of serum thiol can get influenced when you're under chiropractic care. This is my favorite one, read that title. They'll have to rewrite the textbooks. Right, so this is from University of Virginia, and it was published in Discovery Magazine in 2016. Now read this out loud now, um, Cheryl. Ready? It's a stunning discovery that overturns decades of textbook teaching. Researchers at the School of Medicine have determined that, that uh, slow it down, that the... Uh, researchers yeah, at the, the School of the, Medicine have determined that the, that the brain is, is directly connected to the immune system by vessels previously thought not to exist. Continue, Sylvia. I really did not believe there were structures in the body that, that we are not aware of. I thought the body was mapped, said Jonathan Kipnis, a professor of the Department of Neuroscience and director of the University Center for Brain Immunology and yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine? Hey, what do you do? Uh, well, I'm a professor of that, but you don't find a job later on. <laughs> Chris, read the rest, the rest of the air. How these vessels could have escaped detection when the lymphatic system has been so thoroughly mapped throughout the body is surprising on its own. So what's the equation? 
Is there a separation between your brain, nervous system, and immune? It's all one thing. And that's why, you guys, you know, this whole craziness that's been going on in this world, we're fine. Because everybody that, right, Chris, so you're totally fine. I mean, it's like, totally fine. You've been here forever. And the, the, the longer you've been under this type of care, and I know you shared that with me with, like, you know, your doctor there that did all the muscle applied kinesiology, that's why. And that's why, so before the AK thing, <clears throat> when because when, he was older, it was still more about symptoms. It was like you go, you went in when you didn't feel good. But now understanding, you know, by uh, biochemistry, understanding chiropractic biophysics, and the science has finally caught up that your nervous system needs to be constantly fine-tuned <clears throat> if you're going to stay healthy. You know, how often do you have to work out? Like, a lot. It's like not, you can't just do it once a month and be buff. Like, you know, if you want to work out, you have to work out consistently, right? And you go, well, I work out, so that means that I'm um, now... I don't have to shower now. Is that true? No, you still have to shower. Like, oh, show. Oh, I shower, man, like every day, so I'm fine. So that means I have to do laundry anymore. It's a totally different thing. So, oh, okay, I do laundry, I shower, I exercise. Um, I don't have to make my bed anymore. No, you still have to make my bed. So, oh, okay, I do, I'm making, I do all those things, and I don't have to wash dishes anymore. So what's the equation? Anything in life that you want to function at a high level of functioning, and order, you have to do what? You have to put energy into it. What's the equation? Things that go to entropy, the law of entropy, that energy goes towards disorder, right? Unless you put energy into it. It's the same thing. If you don't work your muscles, they atrophy. It's just the way it works. Does that make sense? If you're not constantly striving to get your nervous system and immune system balanced, what's gonna happen to you by default? Failing to plan is planning to fail. How many people have a health plan? We don't have health care in this, in this country, right? Medical treatment. We have crisis emergency care, which is really valuable if there's a crisis and emergency. I wouldn't want to be anywhere in the world except here because we have the best medical acute crisis care. However, it's not health care. It's different. It's totally different. So the key to muscle testing is what? How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. Proper practice. Perfect practice makes perfect success, right? So we already understand that. So, our next seminar, read that, Chris, what's that say? Sign up for our next seminar. Uh, yeah, go ahead, what's the title? Do not get that flu shot until you hear this. Exactly, it's next Tuesday. We can talk to you about the science behind it. And again, our mission statement to share with you and also our catalyzing statement. Anybody online, please type in your questions. And if you found value or were inspired by things that we shared with you this evening, please comment and like so we know that we can engage and share this information with people that you know that need to hear this information, that know nothing or don't know the truth about health. Uh, we're also on Facebook. Uh, like us on there, Mariano Holzak Center. Also Dr. Dennis Mariano, no space in between, so we can connect with each other. We're also on YouTube, Dr. Dennis Mariano. And we're on Instagram with both of them. Dr. Dennis Mariano and Mariano Holistic Life Center. Our website, visit us in our website, drmariano.com. And the most important thing is that I leave you with this, with Dr. Masara Emoto's information, right? The map of consciousness, David Hawkins. Look at this. Remember the frequencies? Well, he studied them in a different way through muscle testing. If you have all these emotions, see these emotions? Look how low vibrational frequency they are. Let's say you're in fear, you're at 100, and the emotion attached to it is what? Sorry. Right. And then, mm. life view is, life is, right? And so what does the news want you to be in constantly? Fear. Right, exactly. And so therefore, or anger, right? Anger is, emotion is hate. Let's hate each other because I'm angry because now I'm fearful. And therefore, life view is everybody's antagonistic. Get you fighting and fighting cool thing about it is that if you vibrate at a high frequency, one person at peace, joy, and love, 600 to 500, right, can negate a million people below 200. You understand that? Because it's a logarithmic value, it goes exponentially high. Do you understand? Is it important for you to check in where your calibration is on a moment to moment basis? It goes even deeper than that which is harder to see. This is the level. This is the log value. Here's the emotion, right? 
So if your emotion is anger or fear, you're at 75, the emotion is what? Anxiety. The process is what? You just run away from things, right? Life view is? Life is frightening. The God view is? God is? Punitive. Do you understand? So these are all connected, and you can you know you can read this and study this a little bit deeper. Everything's connected. Everything's vibration, and you can validate it to muscle tests. So, in closing, I have a brother who's five years younger than me. I remember when he was growing up. I said, "Hey, you're 13 years old now. How does it feel to be a teenager?" You know what he said? Just three more years. What does that mean, Chris? If you're 16, what happens? You can get your driver's exactly. license. Exactly. When my life begins, my life will begin at 16 because now I can drive and I can now be free, right? Was that it? No, of course not. Oh, I hate my job. I work at McDonald's, you know? I, when I get a real job, then life will begin for me. Then I'll be happy, right? Oh, no, no, that wasn't it, right? Oh, wait, I wait to get out of high school. Man, I hate my high school. I go to Catholic high school. This thing is a, a very strict, and I can't do anything I want. And so when I graduate high school, I can buy me be free. I can go to college, and I'll be happy. Oh, that wasn't it. Oh, I'm lonely. I need a girl in my life. When I have that perfect relationship, then I'll be happy, correct? So the sad thing is, people die and go to the end of their life never being fully alive because they were always waiting for that important thing to happen to them to make them happy when really all you have is what the now I contend that everything's happening right here and right now because the future is a dream the past is the memory the now is a gift and that's why they call it the present remember that all you have is the now. Your past history, the trail behind you, the wake behind the boat is done. And the wake does not drive the boat. You, but your thinking with your present moment consciousness is what continues to create the future that you want as opposed to the past history of repeating the same unfamiliar past. My contention is that we need to be in the here and now, stop watching the news, turn everything off, Create the future that you want. Don't let everybody influence you because all they're doing is fear mongering. And it's not gonna, if you just, you want your vibration to be down there, go ahead. But if you want, you need to be focusing on things, love, joy, peace, gratitude, right? The seven uh, fruits of the spirit. So thank you so much everybody um, for joining us this evening. We appreciate everything that you uh, shared, we've shared with you. Have a good night. We'll see you next time in our seminar. I'm Dr. Dennis Mariano. Have a good night.